Here's your first worn weather forecast first. Sponsored by Anderson Collision Center. Visit triveanderson.com. Well, after a little bit of a colder start this morning, we've had plenty of sunshine this afternoon. Brighter temperatures today in the lower 60s. It's going to be a fairly comfortable evening as our temperatures will only drop down into the low 40s. Now we've got clear skies now. We're at 62 in Rockford, 61 in Freeport, 61 also in Dixon. You're going to notice the cloud cover on the increase over the next couple of hours. This will lead to a partly cloudy sky for tonight. Temperatures tonight are down into the low 40s. We've got an increasing chance for showers and thunderstorms tomorrow afternoon and evening. We've got the timing of those coming up here in the first warn forecast a little later. Officials identified the woman killed in a Boone County crash yesterday. Investigators say she had collided head on with a semi truck. Plus, a national newspaper ranks Rockford as the best real estate market in the country. The reason for the rapid boom and how real estate agents are reacting to this news. And the Chicago Bears are on the clock. The NFL Draft is live in Detroit. Our Scott Lever will be joining us live from Soldier Field for the team's watch party. Live from WTVO 17, this is Eyewitness News at 5. Good evening and thanks for joining us here tonight. I'm David Greenberg. Mimi is off. A Loves Park woman is killed in a head-on collision. Yesterday afternoon, officials say Kayla Diza was driving on Route 76 near Caledonia Road when she crossed the center line. Her SUV then crashed into a Mack truck, pulling an oversized load that was heading the other way. Diaz was pronounced dead at the scene. The Boone County Sheriff's Office is investigating this crash. No charges have been filed. Janesville police arrest a suspect in a drug investigation after a hit and run crash. This morning, officers had attempted to confront Deshaun Foreman during a traffic stop. But Foreman then fled the scene. A short time later, Foreman had then crashed into another vehicle, then got out, ran from the scene, was soon apprehended by officers. The driver of the other vehicle did refuse medical treatment while Foreman was taken to the hospital. After release, he was booked into the Rock County Jail, now facing multiple charges, including fleeing an accident and resisting arrest. Well, Rockford's housing market is gaining some national attention. According to a new national ranking from the Wall Street Journal, the Forest City is the top in the nation. Our Blake Dietz spoke to a local realtor, and Blake, she says she can't find homes for her clients quick enough. Yeah, that's right, David. And cost has a lot to do with that. In March, the median price for a home in Rockford hit $235,000. That was more than 50% jump from one year ago and the largest gain in the entire United States. But it's still far lower than the national median price of nearly $425,000. That affordability is driving huge demand. The realtor I spoke with says she hasn't seen anything like this in her 50 years of serving the community. The increase that we have has just been tremendous. And it's because of the lack of the housing. We need good housing. We need more housing. We have such a demand for it here. Like I said before, I had 100 homes for sale during the bad times, and now one house sells in an hour. I'll have more about the booming housing market and the city's response coming up at 6. David? Looking forward to that, Blake, and nice to see our community getting some national attention. Well, the Rockford area was one of two metropolitan areas in Illinois where the unemployment rate fell last week. According to new data from the Illinois Department of Employment Security, the unemployment rate was about 6.7% in March. That is down a half a percent from 2023. In Winnebago County, the rate now sits at 6.4%, down from 6.8 last year. Boone County's rate hit 7.9. That is down from a percent from 2023. Rockford area also did add 400 jobs from the previous year. Well, Small Business Week begins on Sunday, and the Better Business Bureau is reminding owners to be on the lookout for fraudsters. The BBB says there are four common scams that small businesses will be seeing, including stolen identity scams, phishing scams, overpayment scams, and business email compromise fraud. That is a phishing email scam that targets people who pay the bills in businesses. The BBB recommends small businesses keep good records to be extra careful with your payment procedures and protect their digital devices. 
Well, life after time behind bars can be a bit of a challenge. Navigating the basics like finding a place to live and finding a job can be very overwhelming. Today, some got the chance to get a new perspective on some of those potential roadblocks. Andrea Baroni was there. Andrea, what did you learn? Yeah, David, over at Rock Valley College today, people stepped into the shoes of those re-entering our community after serving their time. I think that once you realize what people are going through, you have a lot more patience. You push a lot harder to really get them the assistance that they need. Kiana Washington is the Justice Programs Manager at Goodwill. The nonprofit, along with Rock Valley College and the Winnebago County Chairman's Office, hope to show folks firsthand how many hurdles ex-convicts face on the road to a new beginning. The main goal is to really get people to understand what people in reentry are going through, but then also um, tying that into how can we make action. From parole officers to social workers and service providers, everyone there got a new name and story. Then, given the challenge to work through what the first month out of prison could be like. I was somebody that had to navigate every single aspect of being freshly out of prison, um, on probation, everything from trying to earn some money just through donating plasma to attending uh, treatment and meeting with my probation officer, trying to get food. That's Barb Chidley. She's the neighborhood specialist for the city of Rockford. But at this simulation, she took the role of Brenda, a newly released parolee. I stood there and I did not even know what to do next because I had to have money, but I had to have transportation, but I had to get food, but I had to check in here. She said the process gave her a better understanding of what people are going through. Even as somebody who is already working with so many folks in the community and trying to get them connected to resources, I did not realize how many responsibilities there are on someone who is reentering society. Getting that real life experience in these situations really can help people that are working in these fields, making them understand and helping them to realize like I can actually make a difference and help them get through this barrier and make it not be a barrier. Kiana told me the whole exercise is about finding compassion for those people re-entering our community. David. A great story there, Andrea. Thank you. Well, State Line University raises money to make improvements on campus for students. It is Rockford University's annual day of giving, and the school is hoping alumni, faculty, students, and the community will help raise $200,000 in the next 24 hours. RU hopes to have 425 donors come forward to help renovate their Howard Coleman Library. Administrators say this tradition helps current students see how alumni can still be involved with the university. Students like it because it's kind of a lesson in philanthropy for them. You know, right now students are paying tuition and room and board. But I think they're learning that when they get out, they can give back to their alma mater because this really is a way to get our alumni involved with what's happening here and by giving back after they've uh, graduated and are successful in the world I think that it's a really neat thing that students see that. The library renovation plans include new lighting, furniture, carpets and technology upgrades. Full project is expected to cost more than three million dollars. A bill banning TikTok in the U.S. is now signed into law. Coming up, what comes next for the social media platform as the CEO promises a legal battle. And tonight at 6, local seniors learn more about their health care options here in our community. A look at those resources featured at the Boone County Health and Services Community Fair. After temperatures got down close to 30, actually 230 degrees here in Rockford, we've made a nice recovery this afternoon. We go even further for the weekend, but it does come with a chance for rain and thunderstorms. So we'll time that out for you coming up here on the First Warn Forecast a little later. A bill that could ban TikTok in the U.S. is now the, it, now the law of the land. Lawmakers say the popular app can stay if it gets sold, but TikTok's CEO is promising a legal fight. Hannah Brandt has more on these options. Millions of Americans are bracing for a TikTok takedown because of a new law that could ban the popular app. I think there's a lot of creativity on TikTok. I don't want it to go away. I just don't want at the end of the day it being controlled by a foreign adversary. Senate Intelligence Chair Mark Warner says TikTok users shouldn't worry yet. 
because the law gives TikTok's Chinese owner ByteDance nine months to sell the app, with a possible three-month extension if a sale is in progress. There's certainly time on the books uh, to see how this plays out. Right now, there are concerns China's government has too much authority over the app. This is a huge collection tool, in both in terms of data and in terms of propaganda for the Chinese. That's why supporters of the law say forcing a sale to a non-Chinese owner is critical for U.S. national security. There are already American uh, investors who are, who are who are willing and are interested. But TikTok doesn't seem ready to sell, instead promising a lawsuit. We aren't going anywhere. We are confident and we will keep fighting for your rights in the courts. And TikTok CEO Sho Chu says he thinks they'll win. The facts and the Constitution are on our side, and we expect to prevail. Even some U.S. lawmakers say the new law violates free speech. It could and likely will result in widespread censorship. And Senator Ed Markey says if TikTok's legal challenges aren't successful... A TikTok sale would be one of the most complicated and expensive transactions in history. He argues the chances of a sale within a year or ever are very small. In Washington, I'm Hannah Brandt. Another nice day in the state line. More active weather on the way after the break. Candace times out our chance for some storms this weekend, plus a warm-up. Now, your first worn weather forecast from Chief Meteorologist Candace King. Well, after a little bit of a frosty start this morning, we've had plenty of sunshine this afternoon. Brought our temperatures today back closer to where we should be in the low 60s. At 62 now, this last hour in Rockford, 61 in Freeport, Dixon, same thing in Rochelle, and 59 degrees in DeKalb. It has been a very comfortable afternoon as the wind has been a little on the lighter side. There's been a breeze from time to time from the southeast, but overall it's been comfortable. 61 for our weather watcher, Terry down in Genoa, dew point temperature at 32, and a southeasterly wind here this evening. We've got mostly sunny skies out there. We take a live look with our SkyTrack camera out in Rochelle as high pressure continues to remain in control, but you may notice a little cloud cover building to the south as the beginnings of our storm system now starting to take shape. Severe thunderstorms have been firing up across parts of the plains east of the Rockies out across northeast Colorado. We have severe thunderstorm warnings and even a couple tornado warnings. While a steadier band of rain and a few isolated thunderstorms continues to work through parts of Nebraska, down through Missouri, and then working to the southeast. This is actually right along a warm front that'll slowly work closer to us by the time we get into tomorrow evening. But for most of the day tomorrow, we are on the north end of that front. Now, the weekend is not going to be a complete washout, but we do have the potential for some periods of some heavy rainfall and even a couple severe thunderstorms close by as we look throughout the weekend. I think the timing of this as we go throughout Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Friday morning, kind of a lower chance for any rain or thunderstorms moving in. We'll start to see that ramp up a bit more so Friday late afternoon and evening and overnight. Saturday, we may actually end up with some dry time uh, during the afternoon as we've got a lid or a cap on our atmosphere still keeping that chance though at about 20 percent so there is still that possibility that we could get a thunderstorm or two but right now that looks to be the best kind of time frame for some drier weather rain and thunderstorm chances will increase then saturday night into sunday and we'll hold on to that chance through sunday afternoon now let's put this all together with future cast here as we look through the weekend we maintain that southeasterly wind for us tonight lower 40s we see an increase in cloud cover as we head throughout the morning tomorrow this is 10 11 o'clock tomorrow morning. Moisture coming in. It'll be battling some dry air to the east, so it'll take a little time, but I think as we get further into the morning, closer to noon, we'll start to see a few showers begin to work in. Limited instability during this time, so our thunderstorm chances throughout the day on Friday going to stay low. It won't be until after sunset Friday night that we could get a couple of elevated thunderstorms, maybe with some smaller hail moving in after sunset. Notice overnight Friday into Saturday, it stays really warm. Temperatures are in the low 60s as that front lifts to the north. Winds will then pick up from the southwest on Saturday. Saturday afternoon, and if we clear out from anything in the morning and get a period of sunshine, temperatures on Saturday could easily warm into the low 80s. Um, if we hold on to cloud cover, we are still in the upper 70s, and it'll also feel kind of muggy as far as April is concerned. It'll have more of a summertime kind of hot, humid-ish feel uh, during the afternoon. Here's Saturday night, so here's that complex of thunderstorms, and this is where I think our best potential for 
for heavy rainfall and a strong storm or two could be possible. And then we'll maintain that threat going into Sunday. Cold front slowing down just a little bit Sunday afternoon. So we'll kind of keep an eye on that for Sunday evening with those thunderstorms. So southeasterly wind, warm front to the south of us on Friday. Watch what happens though as that lifts to the north. We maintain a strong southwesterly wind. In fact, our winds on Saturday and Sunday could be gusting as high as 40 miles per hour. Upper 70s, I have it right now on Saturday, 76 degrees on Sunday. We're 70 on Monday. That chance is early. We may see some shower thunderstorms late Tuesday into Wednesday, but I think we'll maintain those 70s as we head into next week. All right, Candace, thank you. A lot of 70s up there. Well, uh, sports is up next. The NFL Draft Night is here. Scott Lab are going to be joining us live from Soldier Field ahead of the Bears' number one pick. Now sports with Reagan Holgate. For the past three months, Bears fans have been anticipating the NFL draft and draft night is now finally here and this can be the most important draft in Bears history considering they have two picks in the top 10, including the number one overall selection. Scott Leber joins us live from Soldier Field. Now Scott, just how rare is it for the Bears to have the number one overall pick? Reagan, it has only happened twice before in Bears history. Quite surprising considering how long this franchise has been around and how much bad Bears football we have seen over the years. And the two times it happened previously were both way back in the 1940s. It is critical that Ryan Poles gets this first pick right tonight and he'll have a hard time messing it up with Caleb Williams sitting right there and pretty much everybody expects Poles to grab Williams. and. Hey, who could blame him? Because Williams has been prolific at USC the last two years. Two years ago, he won the Heisman Trophy while throwing 42 touchdown passes and only five interceptions. Last year, he threw 30 touchdown passes and five interceptions. Yeah, he had that bad game against Notre Dame, but otherwise, Williams was very good. He's used to the spotlight, and he's in it tonight. But Williams says right now he is ready to get this trap behind him and get to work. Um, I'm really ready because... I want to get back to a football team. I haven't, I haven't, I haven't, uh, I haven't been on a football team since since November 18th, um, and so it's you know that's the that's probably the toughest part to me, and, and something I really want to get back to, get in the locker room, be around the guys. And tonight, Williams is in Detroit, where the NFL draft is being held. But here at Soldier Field, the Bears are hosting a draft party for the fans, and it's going to be quite the night. Several Bears players are here tonight, including DJ Moore, Kyler Gordon and Montez Sweat. The fans can go on the field, do some interactive football type games. They can even go in the Bears locker room and have their pictures taken next to their favorite players locker. So a lot of fun stuff going on here tonight at Soldier Field. Reagan. All right, thanks Scott. We'll check back in with you at six o'clock and later on tonight. All right, coming up more in the NFL draft. You can watch the draft right here on WTVO tonight. We'll have a preview show at 630 and then the first round that will begin at 7 o'clock. And of course, the Bears, they are on the clock. That's sports. We're back. Well, our first warning interactive radar brought to us by Rockford Glass and more. We've got mostly sunny skies out there now. Gradual increase in some of the cloud cover as we head throughout the evening hours. Temperatures tonight will dip down into the low 40s. Tomorrow we'll stay in the 50s for most of the afternoon. Cloud cover on the increase. A little windy too as we head through the weekend. Temperatures late in the day on Friday in the low 60s. We'll keep that warmth going into the weekend. We've got some dry time through the weekend too with scattered showers and thunderstorms as we head into Saturday morning and then again Saturday night into Sunday. All right, Candace, thanks. We'll be back at 6 after World News tonight.